I'm Dan Johnson talking with Steve Howard from flytheread.com. Steve, you sat down in Florida, I believe, that you were going to go home and you were going to work on a certain engine and you thought that's what everybody wanted and it turned out you were wrong. Correct. So what did you find out and what are we looking at here? Uh, I found out that the market for the half EW engine is much more appealing uh, to the people looking for 105 pounds and around the 55 horsepower mark. And is that what we got here? Yes, sir. 55, uh, 50, uh, 55 horsepower, 50 horsepower, 105 pounds you said? 105 pounds. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty good number on an airplane like this. Would you mount that on this airplane? Absolutely. Uh, this this can be hey. mounted in place of any full VW era aviation engine, uh, as well as anywhere that you would normally mount a two-stroke Rotax okay. uh, without any penalties in weight. Our goal in this project was uh, less than 3,000 RPM, no redrive, 55 horsepower, and less than 110 pounds. And uh, so far, it looks like we're going to make all of those. You made it sounds like you're making your numbers then. Yes, sir. Okay, now you're saying it would, it'll replace a two-stroke. A two-stroke what? Like a uh, Rotax, Rotax uh, 503? Right, a Rotax 503. Uh, our weight right now, with full accessories, is coming out the exact same weight as a 503 Rotax at 105 to 106 pounds. When you compare apples to apples. Apples to apples, yes, Okay. Sir. All right, that's good stuff. Well, it visually looks quite a bit bigger than a 503. Yes, sir. Um, so how does the weight savings occur then compared to the 503? Well, even though the cylinders on this engine look quite a bit bigger, all of these cylinders are aluminum cooling fins. Ah, okay, okay. And being aluminum cooling fins, even though it looks substantially bigger, it's actually not any heavier cylinder-wise than the original VW cast iron. Is cylinder. that right? Yeah. So yes, okay. Sir. Yeah. And as I look down here, these are these are pretty deep fins. I mean, that's going to provide a lot of cooling. Yes, Plus sir. aluminum, of course. Yes, It's going to cool just like your beer cans or whatever yes, your soda sir. cans. And it also allows us to run a much higher compression ratio without having the penalty of high CHT. Ah. Okay. Okay. Because you're kind Constantly cooling. Yes, sir. Okay, so now if you're going to mount this in an airplane like the one I see here, would you put a cowling around it or would you advise not putting a cowling around you it? You could cow this engine if uh, need be, but uh, this engine, the way that it sits now, would run fine in open air cooling without any baffling or cowling needed. Well, I'm kind of thinking that just from the way it looks and the, and the shape and the appearance of it, which is quite dramatic, I think, uh, if you cowled around the, the engine case and left the cylinder sticking out, I think it'd look pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. The old J3 style cowlings, I Why think not? it would look incredible on that. Yes, sir. They did it for the same reason. Yes, sir. Pull that thing off. Yes, sir. Okay, so this engine here is so new, you didn't get a chance to run it yet. Is no, that right, sir. Uh, we, we were uh, turning the last wrench on this when we put it in the trailer to go to AirVenture. You and I would say about half the vendors on this field have yeah. some story like that. Yes, sir. You um, rush to get it done, but you know the deadline comes and you got to go. So yes, sir, thanks for bringing it. But when do you think you'll run it? Uh, we're going to have this engine running as soon as we get home from Oshkosh. Oh, okay. So you're you're right on the edge. Yes, sir. We're you we're ready to run. We just didn't have time before we had to get here. Not quite enough more. Well, yes, maybe sir. that's just as well. That way you can discover things that at the next show it'll be operating. Yes, sir. Uh, what, are you going to mount it on something when you're done and satisfied? Yes, sir. We've got a Rams S4 that we're going to oh, test this okay. on, and uh, we've also teamed up with David Cooper at Team Minimax, and uh, we're also going to put one of these on one of his aircraft. Okay, great. Well. We'll be looking for those then. It'll be interesting to see how they work, but I'm just kind of guessing that could lend a really cool look with some some artistic uh, input from the airframe maker. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. I great. think so. All right, so interesting though, you thought people wanted a big engine and it turned out they didn't really want well, the big engine. Well, there's still... the ones that talk to you anyway. Yes, sir, and that, there's still very much a market for the larger engine and we're still pursuing the larger engine. Uh, we just found out that uh, the most needed market and the quickest thing that we could get to market with was going to be the smaller cubic inch version of this. And uh, the other cool thing about this is this is something that we have the ability to work with the builder if they want to build their own engine. We can offer this as a kit. Oh. And do as little okay. or as much as the machine work as they want. What are you expecting for time between overhaul? Uh, we're expecting 16 to 1800 hours okay. between overhauls. All right, so, uh, so very, very comparable to the other guys. Yes, sir, and uh, that's, a, that's a beginning number. Uh, realistically, we expect it to go beyond that. Okay. Uh, with the internals that are in this, uh, we've, we've got the best internals you could possibly put in this. Uh, we're not building these engines with Chinese aftermarket. Uh, we're building this all with made in America forged internals that uh, all the quality and Inspection takes place in our shop okay. before we put anything inside of an engine. Uh, we don't want people to think this is something we're cobbling together in the backyard from the Chinese aftermarket and uh, the stuff really available. 
Volkswagen. Uh, you know, we're we're having parts made, a lot of parts made for this engine yeah, so with this, aviation in this mind. This is not a recreated automobile engine. This is a new from stock. Yes, sir. Some of the standard variations between this and your normal uh, half VW engine. Uh, one of the things we really like about this is uh, this is a hydraulic lifter engine. Oh, okay. uh, so you don't have any of the valve adjustment situations that you have with any of your standard half VW stuff. Uh, and uh, valve. Valve adjustment is one of the biggest things that takes the half VWs and the full VWs as well out of the air. Yeah, and so does that mean you don't have to do that at all? Then? There is no valve adjustment on this. When you're building the engine, you set the valves at zero lash and it's finished. You put the valve covers on and from that point out, you fly the engine. Wow, that'd be nice. How about starting the engine? We are working on a front starter setup that goes right here where the breather okay. goes. Okay. And uh, it'll be integrated with this breather. And uh, we'll have a flywheel that mounts here with a small prop spacer to clear the bendix. And uh, right now, the setup's weighing about six pounds. Okay. So well, uh, that's not much for. Uh, no, no. And then, of course, uh, adding a battery to that as well. Correct. But, uh, but with lithium battery technology today, yeah. you know, you're only looking at a couple of pounds to add right. a battery to it. I picked them it. up and gone, there's nothing in this that's box. That's right. It feels that way. Yeah, you, so. you pick up the box, you think you got ripped off. <laughs> that's right. It does <laughs> feel that way. Okay, so electric start pretty easy. Uh, hand prop for those guys that really want to have the old authentic look or something. But. Yeah, sure. There's a wide variation between your younger and older pilots today on uh, what they're willing to run for ignition systems. Uh, you know, some of your uh, old school pilots want magneto ignition and won't accept anything electronic under the cowling, and then you've got some younger guys that won't accept anything that's not electronic. So Digital uh, versus analog. The war continues. The war know. continues, oh, correct. Right. But we want to make all of our customers happy, so we've got endless ignition system options on this engine. Uh, we can run a standard point style ignition, right Right here in the stock VW style case, uh, along with an electronic ignition in the back, uh, as well as we're also working on a flying magnet ignition uh -huh. system with a 20 amp charger to go back here that's got a stator and a charging system all built into one, weighs less than two and a half pounds, and doesn't require any battery power to run the engine. Oh, wow. Cool. All right, so you can kind of address what people want in that way. You offer, if they want more power than this, you've already got something in the works. Sure. And uh, we also offer, uh, as far as induction systems, uh, you know, you've also got guys, it's the same thing. Some people want a carburetor, and some people won't touch one and want fuel injection. We're going to offer this both ways. You're going to offer that both ways, too. We're going okay, to offer so. a digital fuel injection system for this, as well as a good old manual carburetor. So you're kind of like Burger King. Have it your way. Have huh? it your way. That's exactly right. <laughs> when can I get one? Uh, we are hoping to I'll offer this on the market next spring. Next spring, okay. Yes, spring sir. of 2019. Spring of 2019. Should be able to order and get one of these. Yes, sir. Okay, you don't know how long that'll be to get one actually yet because you're not there yet. But uh, Well, uh, all of our engine machining uh, commonly takes three to six weeks. That, okay. That's our common turn or turnaround time on full VW engines, and uh, I don't expect this to be any different. Yeah, you've been doing this already, so this is yes, not sir. your first engine to be putting out no, on sir. the market. Okay, great. You know what? Somebody that's really into it is going to have questions I forgot to ask. So yes, how, where do I send them on the web, Steve, to get that information? You can information? find us at flytheret.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Lone Star Light Sport, which has a lot of great information, and we update regularly. And uh, you can always pick up the phone and call us, 254-498-0028. All right, sounds great. Uh, visiting on the uh, engine here that we're seeing in front of us, which is coming out very soon this year and uh, offered for sale early next year, so it won't be long before you can get this handsome product here that will power an airplane like this very well. We'll follow that on our website, and we'll keep more information as this engine comes to market. You'll see more about that from us, too. Look on bydanjohnson.com for all of that and lots of other affordable aviation. Thanks for joining Steve Howard and myself here at AirVenture Oshkosh to learn more about this engine.